Welcome back to Free Flight Friday. Bit of a mouthful, I guess. And this is now turning into a bit of a series, certainly a bit of a theme, because for the third week in a row, or should I say the third video in a row, we're back in our home airfield in Straven, that's in South Lanarkshire, West Central Scotland. However, this is a first for the channel because it's the first video I've ever produced using Microsoft Flight Simulator, or is it Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? I've no idea. Whatever, it's a new kid in the block. It's the flight simulator, or should I say the home simulator that everyone's talking about. So the first piece of good news is that we're actually in Straven. Straven Airfield is depicted in Flight Simulator 2020 default out of the box. I'm not sure how Colin and Marta, who own the airfield, will like their new house in Flight Simulator 2020. It's certainly nowhere near as good as what I showed you in the last two videos produced in Orbix and Scott Flight. And the clubhouse looks like a 21st century block of flats. So I have no idea what the Asobo engine is doing producing this type of scenery. Anyway, it is default. Straven is in the simulator, so I guess there's something to be happy about. You also may have noticed that there is a bus moving around. It seems to move about 50 feet and back again. I have no idea what it's doing in the sim. Anyway, back to today's flight and you can see we're back in the Diamond DA62, but this time it is the default Diamond DA62 in Flight Simulator from Microsoft. Being colorblind, I can't really tell you what color it is. Some say it is purple, some say it is dark gray. I've got no idea, but I got it from the Mega livery pack that's free and available to download for the new sim. Jumping right into the cockpit, it looks pretty good. However, on like the Caronado DA62 that you saw in the last video from prepared 3D version 4.5, the doors don't open, the armrest doesn't move, and quite a few things don't work. But I'm going to forgive Microsoft and Asobo because this is a D fault aircraft. And since I've been flying these virtual aircraft in flight sim from FS-98 through to FSX and prepared, you know how terrible the default aircraft were in these old sims. So this is night and day in comparison. Right, first things first, let's get the Battery Master on, followed by the avionics. Let's bring up the map display in the Garmin multi functional display unit. That's the right hand display to most of us Sunday pilots. And just like we did in the Caronado DA62 in the last video, it's time to switch on the fuel valves. And then I'm going to switch on the left hand engine master followed by the left hand engine pump. And then we simply repeat the same process for the right hand engine. Right, before I get started, I want to tell you a little bit about the flight that I'm proposing to do in this episode. And to be clear, it's very simple. I'm simply going to try and reproduce the exact same flight that I made to Newton Ards in the last video in prepared 3D version 4.5 on board the Caronado DA62. The objective of this video is to look and see if Microsoft Flight Simulator is any better or even any worse. I've got the premium deluxe version of Microsoft Flight Simulator installed on my PC on its own F drive. The F drive is a one terabyte SSD and with Flight Simulator installed, it has used up just under 200 gigabytes of space. The only bot scenery that I currently have for Flight Simulator 2020 is UK's 2000 Glasgow HD, my home international airport. I've also installed some free add-ons from Orbix in the Channel Islands. But other than that, everything you're going to see today is stock. But I suppose I should let you know. World updates 1 through 3 are also installed. Okay, I'm taxing to runway 28. It's 28 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's 27 in the real world and 27 in prepared and explain. Anyway, I plan to do a standard departure on runway 28 to the north before doubling back on myself and leaving the area on the dead side. Westbound towards the Firth of Clyde.
and getting airborne out of Straven, the first thing you will see is the wind turbines that are dotted all over South Lanarkshire are depicted in the out of the box scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right off, the whole graphics engine is very impressive. The scenery looks absolutely incredible, despite the auto-generated buildings looking pretty out of place. But we'll talk more about these as this flight gets underway, because it's time to turn westbound on the dead side of Straven Airfield. As you can see, the Whiteleys wind farm, the largest wind farm in Europe, is very well depicted in this out of the box scenery. And while not as well defined as the add on scenery that you would have seen in the last video from Orbix and Scott Flight, there are a few hiking and cycle paths depicted here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but not the myriad that you'd have seen in the add on scenery for prepared. recorded this flight in late March 2021. I departed Straven at just after 9.30 a.m. GMT, or should I say Zulu time, and I'm using the inbuilt real-time weather engine. As you can imagine, allowing me to move the camera around, the aircraft is currently flying on autopilot, and you can see it moving around, which is something you wouldn't see in prepared. The 21st century physics engine of Microsoft Flight Simulator clearly doing its job. And at 2,000 feet, heading towards the Firth of Clyde with the island of Aaron in the distance, which you'll see a little bit later on in the video, the quality and textures of the countryside, or should I say the mesh in Microsoft Flight Simulator, look absolutely incredible. However, it's not all good, so please stick with me in this video, as I give you an honest opinion of what's both good and bad in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And first up, the Hunterston Nuclear Power Station on the Ayrshire coast is depicted in the scenery. And while it's not handcrafted as you saw in the last video from Orbix and Scott Flight, the Hunterston Nuclear Power Station is a pretty unassuming rectangle building, nothing too hard for the Asobo Autogen scenery to recreate. Turning westbound again over the island of Millport, straight ahead of us is the island of Butte. And it's here I'll be looking to see if the Air Ambulance grass strip has been recreated in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And yes guys, despite the air ambulance grass strip at Butte being very hard to see, it is there. Again, it's not as well defined, or should I say, it's not as well presented as Orbix does with Scott Flight in Prepared. But let's be clear, it's not even presented in either FSX or Prepared, without add-on scenery from the likes of Orbix and Scott Flight. Okay, time to climb back to 2000 feet, heading towards the island of Arran. As you can see, the Firth of Clyde is like a mill pond this morning. So the shadowing provided from the mountains on the sea and also the clouds on the sea, I have to say, look very impressive in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And therefore, in my opinion, decades ahead of what you find in Prepared.
and approaching Braddock, the main town on Arryn. I have to say, I think Asobo and Microsoft have done another pretty good job at presenting this small rural town. But I would say one criticism is that the ferry terminal is not depicted at all, not even using Autogen. Right, time to head back out over open water again, en route towards the Ailsa Craig, also known as Paddy's Milestone. at the shadowing as the Ilsa Craig rises from the Firth of Clyde, basically a lump of granite at the mouth of the Clyde estuary. And if you look in the distance, you can clearly start to see the outline of the Northern Ireland coast. OK, it's time to climb again to 2,000 feet, heading westbound towards the Kintyre Peninsula. As I said in the last video, the Kintyre Peninsula and this part of Argyllan Butte is separated with Northern Ireland by only 14 miles of pretty treacherous water where the Atlantic meets the Irish Sea. And as a result, most single engined pilots would start climbing now to between seven and nine thousand feet, keeping themselves within gliding distance of both coastlines. But of course, there's no such problems when you're flying a twin engine aircraft speeding towards Rathlin Island. Heading towards the North Antrim coast, it's time to descend again. I'm actually going to descend to around 300 feet because I want to take a run along the Causeway coast in search of the Giant's Causeway and see how Microsoft and Asobo have presented it in this new flight simulator. For those of you who are interested, we've just passed overhead the Carracker Reed rope bridge. And while the scenery may look good, it is not that accurate. And of course, one of Northern Ireland's most popular tourist attractions hasn't been presented at all. The Giant's Causeway, one of the seven natural wonders of the world, is just off my left wing. I'm going to come back around for a closer look shortly, but on first impressions, I have to say that I'm not impressed. While this scenery may look good, it is certainly not accurate. It is showing an awful lot of trees which simply don't exist in real life. Right, let's come back around again and try and have a closer look at the Giant's Causeway. I'm going to slow the sim down guys because right ahead of us you can see the Giant's Causeway. Or should I say a Sobo's pretty poor attempt at representing the Giant's Causeway in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah. 
I've got no idea where this is supposed to be. I think it should be Port Rush, but yeah, it's quite questionable how good this scenery is in the north coast of Northern Ireland. Anyway, I'm going to stop the cameras in a few seconds as I make my way across County Antrim towards the Irish Sea coast because I'd like to see what Larne Harbour looks like before I head towards Whitehead, Belfast Loch and down towards Carrick Fergus and finally Belfast before turning inbound towards Newtonards. We've just heard the autopilot being switched off as I attempt to make an approach towards Larne Harbour in this Diamond DA62. And of course the first thing that I notice on approach to Larne is the FG Wilsons or the Caterpillar factory just off my right wing. And then approaching Larne Harbour. I can see that the Autogen scenery engine has done a pretty poor job at presenting Ballylumford Power Station. If you remember in the last video as I passed overhead the Ballylumford Power Station you could see how well the Orbex EU Ireland or should I say the Orbex EU Northern Ireland had presented this icon at the entrance to Larne Harbour. And as I make my way up Larne Loch towards Whitehead, the bridge onto Isla McGee doesn't even exist. The town of Whitehead looks okay, but let's be honest, it's a pretty unremarkable place and hard to get wrong with even autogen scenery. Anyway, let's make a right hand turn to follow the County Antrim coastline of Belfast Loch, initially heading towards Kilroot and Carrick Fergus. And approaching what should be another icon at the entrance to Belfast Loch, of course the Karoot Power Station doesn't exist here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, represented by pretty flat, unassuming and boring auto-generated buildings. Let's hope that Asobo and Microsoft have done a better job of Carrick Fergus. Words are really beginning to fail me here looking at how Carrick Fergus Castle is represented in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Come on Microsoft, this auto-generated building needs to be replaced by the world's best kept Norman Castle. However, from the plus side, from maybe six or seven thousand feet on board an Airbus A320 making its approach towards Belfast International Airport, this probably doesn't look too bad at all. And given that it wasn't until World Updates 3 when Buckingham Palace appeared out of council flats, I suppose Northern Ireland is going to take a back seat and we'll probably have to wait on third party developers such as Orbix to make things better. Anyway, let's head towards Knocker Hill where I can already see that the World War II monument doesn't exist in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As you can see, definitely no World War II memorial here at Noka. But the one thing that I do notice that Northern Ireland hasn't had done by Microsoft and Asobo is wind farms. The area just off my right wing to the north is full of wind farms. Maybe it was Scotland that got the wind farm treatment by Asobo and Microsoft. Who knows? Okay, overhead the Brambles where I bought my first house back in 1994. The Autogen scenery has done a reasonable job, so unless you really know the area well, you probably wouldn't know any better and it actually looks quite smart. Below me now is the school that I went to. It was known as Monkstown Community School until a few years ago, but is now part of Newton Abbey College. The factory that you can see to my one o'clock is another FG Wilson's Caterpillar factory on the Doak Road. The garden centre at the junction of the Monkstown Road and Doak Road is just represented by another Autogen building. But I have to admit that the old STC factory is well represented here in Microsoft Flight Simulator.
White Abbey Hospital really isn't represented at all. And while the housing estates surrounding this hospital aren't represented too badly using autogen buildings, I was surprised and impressed when I saw the high-rise flats of Rathcool. And ahead of us, the light industrial and retail complex surrounding the Abbey Centre. I do think that the M5, M2 foreshore area of Belfast is very well presented. However, the church that you can see below us right now is actually an extremely modern building and not the traditional church that has been auto-generated. As we approach the city of Belfast, we know that it has had a bit of a makeover in World Updates 3. Ahead of us is the world famous Harland and Wolfe shipyard which of course was the birthplace of the Titanic and as you can see the M3 Lagan Bridge is also well presented with the brand new block of apartments right next door. The Odyssey Centre and of course the Titanic Museum have appeared in World Updates 3 along with those two iconic Harland and Wolf cranes Samson and Goliath. You can also now see the runway of George Best Belfast City Airport. There is some pretty reasonable free scenery for Belfast City Airport available for Microsoft Flight Simulator but I think I'll wait until Gary and the team at UK2000 produce one of their excellent payware airport sceneries. The last scenery object that I want to talk about on this scenic flight between Straven and Newtonards is of course the home of democracy here in Northern Ireland. The grounds around this iconic building are actually presented quite well here in Microsoft Flight Simulator but the building itself leaves a lot to be desired. As we leave the Parliament building at Stormont behind us, we'll soon be approaching Strangford Loch and the town of Newtonards, and of course it's GA Airport. This has actually been my first end-to-end -end flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It was of course released in August 2020. I managed to get a copy of the premium deluxe version from a friend who works in Microsoft, and while I installed it in September 2020, it's only after my PC rebuild in March 2021 have I re installed it onto its own SSD and started to have a decent play. As a tube liner pilot in the virtual world, I'll not be making the jump to Microsoft Flight Simulator until aircraft from Aerosoft, Quality Wings and PMDG are available for the new sim. The real Airbus pilot and his real world pilot friends don't rate Microsoft Flight Simulator for real world training purposes, instead they prefer X-Plane. And due to the investment that I've made in prepared 3D over the years and the lack of study level tube liners from the likes of PMDG, Aerosoft and of course Quality Wing. I think that the majority of my virtual flying will be done in prepared 3D version 4.5 for certainly the remainder of 2021. Right here we are approaching Newton Arge and as you can see the Newton Arge GA airport is just off my left wing. I therefore plan to do the same circuit that I did in the last video approaching on runway and to be clear, this is my first ever landing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I'm going to warn you now, it won't be pretty. However, I really hope you've enjoyed this first look at Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Sim Sunday YouTube channel. It's been a very interesting video to make. And while I know I've been critical at times, the Sim is only going to get better with constant updates from Asobo and Microsoft, not to mention the myriad of third party add-ons that we're going to see appearing over the coming days weeks and even years. The base engine and obviously the scenery engine look absolutely incredible and I'm in no doubt that this home PC simulator will become the sim of choice for Sunday pilots like myself in the years ahead while the professional pilots like the real Airbus pilot will remain devotees to X-Plane. As I complete my downwind leg, it's time to bring this episode of Sim Sunday and another Free Flight Friday video to a close. The real Airbus pilot was telling me this morning that he's planning to do some bush flying in X-Plane and record the flights as part of Free Flight Friday. So until the next video, all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching and wherever you fly in your virtual world, don't forget to fly safe.